In fact, speaking of checkpoints in the police state, uh, Brad Jardis, former law enforcement against prohibition member, former uh, cop for about 10 years. Uh, he is on the road now as a professional driver. And uh, Brad, you're with us from Texas. Happy Independence Day, folks. Hey, happy Independence Day to you, Brad. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Um, I'm calling today to talk about the Fifth Amendment. Uh, a little bit about myself to some of the listeners um, that don't know who I am. Um, I was a police officer in New Hampshire for 11 years, and I left law enforcement because, well, pretty much the Free State Project came to me, and I started to hang out with uh, people in the Liberty Movement, and I started to listen, and then I started to realize that I was doing a whole slew of things at work under the guise of uh, enforcing the law that were very immoral. Mm. Uh-oh. Right, we lost. That didn't sound good. Brad, you gone? I think he is. Tell you what, uh, Brad, call us back. We'll get you back on. He's had what he was talking about is his incredible journey. Uh, as he said, you know, we moved here, those of us who love liberty, and there are more coming. Uh, there are only several hundred that have made the move to New Hampshire thus far as part of the Free State Project, and thousands more are pledged to make the move. Well, almost almost 11,000 people are pledged at this point. We're very close to that number. And a lot of them, uh, you know, they found out about Brad because on his own, he had joined law enforcement against prohibition. Like he had gotten to that point of understanding that prohibition was uh, was a real bad thing. And uh, he had joined that on his own. And that's how we discovered Brad. And uh, many folks within the liberty movement here in New Hampshire befriended him uh, when some people were not being so friendly toward him. There were people that that uh, that were friendly towards him, including myself. Uh, Julia, you were you were one of them as oh, well. Oh, I always liked Brad. Yeah, he's really just a, a sweetheart of a guy, and uh, and so as he was, you know, describing that it was his process where he came to the conclusion that what he was doing as part of his job, even though he loved his job, he loved the idea of you know stopping the bad guys. He was one of those cops that got in for the right reasons, you know, to go after the bad guys. He realized that he was doing wrong, that he was enforcing laws on people that were wrong. To do and he couldn't in good conscience continue in that role over time and it, i think it kind of it kind of you know wore away at him over time he didn't quit you know the next day after meeting liberty lovers these ideas take time to sink in uh it takes time for people to really understand these concepts it took me years of my life to really come around to uh, i think finally grasp uh grasp them and i'm you know we're all still learning and I think Brad is back on here. Brad, I was kind of trying to pick up your story for you of how uh, the, you know you've ch you changed over time, and you you know you came to the conclusion you you just couldn't do it anymore. Yeah, thank you, Ian. I do apologize. I'm in uh, I'm in East Texas uh, out here working, and the phone service isn't that great. Uh, but anyway, um, in my entire life, I've never been convicted of anything, and I've also never been arrested for anything until two days ago mm. and I want to tell I want to tell this story about how I got arrested at the United States border please two days ago yes <laughs> two days ago I was in Nogales uh, Mexico which is in the state of Sonora and I went down there on my off time to just walk around and uh, you know I had never been there before and as I was coming back into the United States I make it a practice to limit what I tell government agents now, and hold on a second before, one, you, before you get to this practice and what happened did you have any trouble down in Mexico I mean with the Mexican agents or anything like that n no not at all when, when you walk into Mexico um, you walk you in. have to do is you yeah I, I walked in okay. um, you you press a button uh, and there's a there's a little stoplight and it either says pass or stop and it's um, it's it's randomly set up, and if and if you uh, if you press the button and it turns red, you got to stop, and they check you. But they're very welcoming, uh, actually. And uh, there was a female border agent, and she smiled and waved me through. And um, once I once I walked in, the people were just very friendly. And um, there was uh, this this one fellow who I ended up paying him forty bucks. He gave me a tour of the city, and uh, it, it was a really great time. And uh, I had no trouble in Mexico. It, hmm. The trouble began when I started walking back into the United States. Gotcha. And, and as a practice, and I would suggest this to any listener uh, who can hear me, do not ever talk to the government. I, any government agent that talks to you, unless you call them to your house to ask for help, every single thing you say to them is, is, it is geared to be written in a report to be used when an agent testifies against you in court. So I try to make it a practice. You know, I consider myself a quasi-liberty activist, and I, out here on the road, um, you know, I try to do my little part in standing up for my rights. And 
when I crossed the border, this, um, this is the second time that I've done this, I refuse to talk to the border agents. Um, when, when someone crosses the border... <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Do, do you also, I mean, do you have, a, like, a government ID or passport or whatever? Yes, yes. So you'll when, show when them this, but you won't talk to them? Right. When someone crosses the international border, there's two things that happen. The, the two things are immigration and customs. You need to prove that you're a United States citizen or eligible for admission into the interior of the country. Of course, it's and impossible need... to prove that you're a United States citizen because it's just a fancy yeah, I'm concept. Sorry. Uh, I'm but, sorry. Uh, you... but they want to see some sort of government uh, ID. Is the idea, you, right? you are correct. You you are correct about that. There there actually is no such thing as a citizen, but that's a that's a whole another whole yeah. other story. Um, so you, you need to prove that you uh, you legally uh, can enter the United States. And as I entered uh, the inspection line, I handed the customs officer uh, my passport, and I bought three shot glasses um, for three friends. Um, and I handed him. Uh, I put the box of shot glasses down. And I said, uh, I have three shot glasses to declare. And he looked up at me with a smile, and he said, oh, what do you have to celebrate? Now, some people might think, oh, geez, you know, well, the guy's just being friendly. But that, yeah. <laughs> police and customs agents are not your friends. These questions are designed to, uh, to, to gauge reactions and responses to see if someone is hiding something or to see if someone is guilty of something. So when he said this to me, you know, uh, as I practice not talking to government agents, I decided to plead the Fifth Amendment. No, wait, did you actually explicitly say that, or did you just remain silent? Well, I can go into it a little bit. I definitely want you to go into like. it. Hang on. Uh, stick with uh, us. Okay. more with Brad Jardis here, uh, former law enforcement officer, so he knows exactly what these tactics are. Uh, he's been trained in this stuff. 800-259-9231. So he put, uh, put some uh, freedom stuff to the test at the border, and well, we'll tell you what happened here in a little bit. Free Talk Live. Bradley Jardis is with us. He's formerly of law enforcement against prohibition, a cop who's spent 10 years, 11 years of his life, a former cop, uh, spent 10 plus years on the squad, on the streets in New Hampshire, uh, discovered liberty, uh, was already, I would say, of a liberty mindset, at least in some areas, certainly in the prohibition area, discovered the liberty movement up here uh, as part of the Free State Project and other New Hampshire liberty activists. And ended up having to quit his job because he just couldn't uh, deal with the things that he was being told to do as a police officer anymore. Has now hit the road as uh, as a professional driver. A big change in uh, in careers. You're getting to uh, kind of see the the country, and you've taken a little bit of time off, I guess, to uh, to travel down to Mexico. As you're walking back, uh, you encountered some trouble at the border where you're you are showing them the uh, shot glasses you'd purchased in Mexico, and it was your intention to not speak to these border agents beyond the bare bare minimum so go ahead and pick up your story so as i entered the inspection line um like i said i handed the inspection officer my passport and the three shot glasses one of which i got for you ian it should come in the mail in a few days oh, thanks. and um he said to me he goes oh you know what are the shot glasses to celebrate you know a, a seemingly innocuous question however uh, the true intent of asking these questions is to engage in small talk to see if someone acts nervous to see if someone um, slips up in their words, and it's all designed to get you in trouble. So I said to this fellow, his name is Agent Aldrich, I said, um, yeah, I'm not going to answer that. And he looked up at me and he said, you have to, you have to answer my questions. What? And I responded, I'm sorry? I'm just laughing. I responded that I didn't and that I had proved that I was a United States national and that I made a verbal declaration a verbal customs declaration, as is allowed by the Code of Federal Regulations, in that I wasn't going to answer his questions. This guy jumped up, grabbed me by the arm, and dragged me into the back room. He pushed me up against the wall, he searched me, and he, uh, he basically pushed me into a chair. He got into my face and he pointed at me and he started yelling. He started telling me that this is not the Border Patrol Station 10 miles north, this is the U.S. border and that I have to, you know, I have to answer all of his questions. I looked, I looked at him and I calmly said, You're, you are a very angry man. And, oh, he did not like that. <laughs> he, um, he, um, he, said, um, he said, I am an angry man, and uh, he, he went on and on. And I tried very calmly to explain this to him. If you lie to a federal agent 
it is a, it's against the law. It's specifically against United States Code 18 U.S.C. 1001. If you make any statement to any federal officer that is a lie, you can go to prison. Just ask Martha Stewart. Mm -hmm. That's what she went to. That's what she went to prison for. If she had kept her mouth shut, she probably wouldn't have gone to jail. And I pointed this out to him. And using the logic that the customs officers want to use at the border, if you were to have gone into a foreign country and broken the law, once you come to the border, you would have to tell them that when they ask you because their logic is you can't remain silent and you certainly can't lie because that's a crime. And I pointed this out to him, and he, he wasn't going to hear it, so he stormed out of the room. Another agent that was in the room that was sitting at a computer he uh, looked at um, another agent that was there, and he said, "This mother effer thinks he knows everything." Wow. And I looked at, I looked at him, and I said, "You know, that's really unprofessional. Why you I don't respectful. have to call me?" <laughs> yeah, I said, "You don't have to call me a mother effer." I said, "I want to talk to your supervisor." And he pointed at the female agent, and he said, "That's her right there." And I said, I said to her, uh, I want to file a complaint because he just called me a mother effer. Mm -hmm. And he said, he looked at me, and he said, "I didn't call you a mother effer." And I said, oh, I see how this is going to be. And the, uh, the female supervisory agent, you know, after I said I want to file a complaint, she completely dodged, the, dodged it, and she looked at me and said, you need to answer our questions. And I repeated. I said, I do not need to answer your questions. I declared my citizenship, and I made a customs declaration. I do not need to answer any more of your questions. Right at this time, the agent that had grabbed me by the arm and dragged me in the room he came storming back in the room. He pointed at me, and he said, this is the third time he's done it, or he's done this, um, which, which is an, ina which is an inaccurate statement. It was the second time that I had um, done this at the border, and the first time I actually uh, blogged about it at freeteam.com. If you Google intimidation at the U.S. border, you can read my blog post. And he, uh, he said to uh, the female agent, he said, um, can we write him? Now, I don't know if, if uh, write him is a term used by uh, the Customs and Border Protection to, to indicate filed charges. Um, I didn't hear her say yes, but she must have nodded because the next thing I know, this very angry man came storming at me, and he told me I was under arrest. He <sighs> handcuffed me. He dragged me into, uh, he dragged me into a side room, and uh, he searched me again, and they locked me in a cell. The wow. cell didn't have a didn't have a, didn't even have a toilet or oh that's or, lovely um, or anything to drink. I suspect because they want to be able to examine what comes out of a person's body if they suspect them of drug smuggling. Maybe or uh, maybe it's just so, to, maybe it's just to tweak you out. You know, maybe it's just to get so, you to crack. Yeah. So so here I am. I'm lying on this uh, cell bench in uh, you know in federal custody, and surprisingly, I felt rather serene. Mm. I, I thought about, I, I started to think about all the peaceful people that I had put in this same exact situation and how, you know, I, I, I believe in karma and I believe that if you treat people well, good things will happen to you. And, you know, I actually, I felt, I felt very relaxed given this was my first time ever being arrested. Well, you know, um, I have to say the same thing, uh, just to kind of interrupt you there, uh, that when I was arrested for the first time, it wasn't a harrowing experience or anything like that. And, and I was, I guess, fortunate. I didn't, I, well, I suppose I did have an angry man shouting at me. Mine was wearing a robe when he was shouting at me, and I was arrested at that point. Uh, but it was in a courtroom when they arrested me. But when I went into jail, I was very, very positive. Uh, I had a very positive mindset and, and kept that throughout the entire experience. And I think that once you've resolved that you understand that jail is a possibility for you, if you're doing activism of whatever type, and it's going to be activism that uh, you know is going to put you at risk, then you have to have already come to the conclusion that, okay, if I continue down this road, at some point there's a chance somebody's going to put me in handcuffs and put me in a cage. And you just kind of, you've, if you've accepted that as a possibility in advance, it's not as a, as a shocking experience as I think that some people would expect it to be. Well, dealing, doing any type of activism against the federal government is extremely dangerous, and it is most dangerous when you're dealing with bureaucrats at the border. For because sure. The Supreme, the Supreme Court has, you know, there is a, a much, there's a much le uh, lesser um, expectation of privacy when you cross an interna international border. But I've read all these Supreme Court cases, and I've read all the federal regulations, and I know what these people are supposed to do. And, you know, as I was in the jail cell, um, and I actually said to the agent um, right before he put me in the cell, I said, would you reconsider doing this? And he said, no, I will not reconsider doing this. 
and he slammed the door. Now, what I was arrested for was not breaking any federal law, because I did not break any federal law, and I'll get into that a little bit more. I was arrested for what's called contempt of cop, and it, mm-hmm. it's an actual psychological um, uh, syndrome that, um, that does exist, and many times when police have their authority challenged, they re- respond in a violent and irrational way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm just trying to imagine how frustrated this guy must have been, the fact that you weren't being shaken by his attempts to intimidate you. I mean, that's got to bug him as well. I'll tell you what, Brad, stick with us. Yes, you've got more to the story. More here in a moment with Bradley Jardis, a former law enforcement officer arrested at the border by the Border Patrol. We'll continue his story in moments. This is Free Talk Live. As we continue with Brad Jardis, Bradley Jardis with us here, uh, calling from Texas after being released last night. After being arrested, uh, I'm glad you're not still in a cage, Brad. Uh, you were arrested as you attempted to come back into uh, the so-called United States by via a border entry over at uh, the Nogales uh, area. The uh, I guess there's is there also a Nogales, Texas? I feel like there is. There's a Nogales, Arizona, which is right on the border of Nogales, uh, Mexico. I see. Okay. So that's where you were coming back through, and uh, you ended up in a conversation with a particularly ornery uh, government bureaucrat who didn't like that you didn't want to answer his questions about why you had shot glasses uh, that you were declaring as your customs declarations you were coming back in. Uh, He attempted to uh, kind of rough you up a little bit, uh, intimidate you. They locked you in a cage, and uh, were supposed to write you up or something like that. Go ahead with your story. So as I'm lying in, uh, in my little cage, um, I asked for some water, and they obliged. They gave me a bottle of water. And another agent came in who was actually uh, very nice, and he, you know, he, tried explain, you know, he tried asking me why I was doing what I was doing. And I took the opportunity to you know, explain the logic to him about the Fifth Amendment and that you can't compel a person to testify against himself. And that's what the police... Oh, What's that I'm sorry. Just to, just to kind of uh, interrupt you here, on uh, to go off slightly off track. Had you heard the news out of Keene where a man was actually jailed? Uh, one of the activists up here, Jim Johnson, was jailed for not filling out a form, a financial yes, affidavit? Yes, I did. I did. That seems like a clear violation of, uh, of the Fifth Amendment uh, to me. Don't you agree? Uh, I would, because giving financial information to the government, they can use against you, um, especially because if you fill the form out accurately, um, you know, it may have an adverse effect on you, and you certainly can't lie about it. So, I mean, in effect, uh, although one is done by a person wearing a robe and this one is done by a person wearing a badge, in effect, it's the same thing. So go ahead with your story. So, you know, I took the time to try to explain that to to this agent that was there, and, uh, you know, he disagreed and he left. And I was left to, to myself for about a half an hour, and then a special agent from Immigration and Customs Enforcement showed up, an ICE special agent. And typically, the uh, special agents, um, they're what's called an 18, uh, uh, 1118 or an 1811 um, pay grade series. Um, and they're, you know, they're typically, um, you know, better educated than the, the typical, you know, rank and file uniform wearing government, federal government police officer. And I explained to him my position, and I could tell that he completely agreed with me. But there was a there was a customs uh, officer standing in the cell when I was talking to him, and you know he basically didn't want to agree with me. And this customs officer that was uh, that was there basically said, you know, what you know, we were obviously never going to get through to you about this. You think you know everything, blah 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 blah, so on and so forth. And uh, after I made my case to the special agent, he left. And um, the agent who arrested me came back. He opened up the cell door. He gave me my money back. <laughs> he threatened to call my employer. He, um, he told me that I was now in their system and that any time I was to, to cross the border that I would have to deal with this, um, deal with the fact that I was now flagged in their system. Mm-hmm. And he kept lecturing me. And, you know, I was getting pretty upset at this point. And, I, you know, I wish I had... I, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of. I kind of take satisfaction uh, in that I said this, and I looked him dead in the eye, and I very calmly said, "How does it feel to be wrong?" And he said, "If you don't leave right now, you're going to be arrested for trespassing." <laughs> and how, and he couldn't get you out of there quick enough at that point. I, I, I said to him because obviously the special agent pulled him aside and said, "Yeah, uh, he didn't break any law." 
Um, you arrested him right. for basically, uh, I was arrested because I didn't answer two questions. What was I doing in Mexico and what were the shot glasses I purchased intended to celebrate? Those were the two questions I didn't answer and that's what got me arrested. Neither one of those questions I had any legal obligation to answer and I was arrested because because of the contempt of cop syndrome. And something I failed to mention earlier, um, when, I, when I said to this agent, you're a very angry man, um, when he kept uh, barking, you know, barking at me, I, I looked at him and I said, this is what's called contempt of cop. And, you know, and that's, the, that's when he stormed away after I said that. You know, I was trying very hard to, uh, I, was, I was in much more control than these guys were. Clearly. And so as I was leaving, I said, I w I'd like to speak to the supervisor. They said no. I said, I'd like everyone's names who was involved. Mm -mm. They said no. And they told me again, if you don't leave right away, you're going to be arrested. Wow. Amazing. So, so uh, um, I left um, without charges. I have absolutely no court date. Uh, I was never fingerprinted. I was never photographed. I think after they locked me in the cell, they realized that they made a mistake. Um, and this is the free country in which we live. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Brad. It's an amazing story. Uh, guys, your thoughts? Are you not going to be able to file a complaint now since you weren't able to get names and things? Probably not. Well, I've... I've, ar I've already filed a complaint with uh, their Professional Standards Bureau, and the agent who I spoke to agreed with me that it would, he, his actual words were, if this agent were to contact my, uh, my employer, um, that it would be outside the scope of his employment. And I asked this agent if he could preemptively order this, uh, this agent Aldridge who arrested me, uh, order him not to contact my employer, and he said he would do that. I, I don't remember his exact words. He said, "Yes, I'll, I'll look into that." Well, yeah. Um, whether so, he will or do it, or, whether he will do it or not, is another question. What will happen to you if they do contact your employer? Well, um, if they do contact my employer uh, and something adverse were to happen to me, um, I would, I would imagine, and I'm not an attorney, but I would imagine it would only make my lawsuit against them better. Mm -hmm. I've already contacted the Arizona Civil Liberties Union. And um, for any listener who's interested about, uh, you know, about suing the federal government, um, it's actually the, the bureaucrats uh, in the United States Congress never enacted a way to sue the federal government for, for misconduct by federal agents. The, the, the United States Congress did enact a way to sue state agents for violating federal rights, but they never enacted a way to sue federal actors. The way to sue federal actors was actually created by the Supreme Court and it was for a rights violation by the ATF. And the case was actually titled Bivens, B-I-V-E-N-S. So if anyone wants information, if, they're, you know, if they believe their rights were violated by the federal government, they could Google that. But I'm certainly not letting this go. Man, I don't and, know where you uh, find lawyers that are willing to take these kinds of cases. I mean, I actually uh, was assaulted by a security agent at a courthouse here in, in Keene last week where he grabs me by the arm and attempts to push me out, uh, out the door of the court. And, uh, you know, multiple people saw this happen. I was rolling video at the time, and I contacted a supposedly liberty-oriented attorney who basically said, yeah, he's working for the Justice uh, Division. Even though he's, work he's officially employed by the Sheriff's Department, he's under orders by the Justice Division, and so therefore it's, it's basically something that's impossible to do. Like, these guys well, can it, just get away is, with pushing people around, and that's, there's nothing they it can is, do. It is highly difficult to sue either the state or federal governments because of uh, because individual actors are protected by uh, they have either uh, qualified or absolute immunity however if they operate outside the scope of their employment to include making a false arrest that would open them up for liability and whereas in, in, in my particular situation the supervisor authorized this guy to arrest me for something uh, you know they kept saying I was impeding a federal official um, they said you're impeding a federal official, but you know, impeding silence cannot be used as impeding um, because that you know that com completely flies in the face of the of way the, the constitutional Amendment. system is uh, of the Fifth Amendment of right. the way it's supposed to work. According to them, you can't lie to them because that's a crime, and according to the position they're taking, you can't remain silent either because that's a crime. People can follow and, you, Brad. I know that you're you're probably going to write something up about this, and uh, there's probably a little more you're going to tell uh, online because I know that at one point the, the feds were allegedly following you last night as you were driving through southern the southern U.S. <laughs> and so there was more to the story. But thanks for the call tonight. Thanks for sharing it. We'll let you get back on the road. Uh, drive safe out there, all right? 
Let's take care, and 